What's up guys, David Land here bringing you another die-cast review, this time on two Bush series. This Bush series, not that Bush series, cars from 1998 and 1999 respectively. They are Tony Stewart and Casey Atwood's Shell and Castrol cars from, like I said previously, the Bush series. I got these cars at the dollar buckets at the uh, vendors outside of the track at Pocono Raceway for the Pocono NASCAR race. If you'd like to check out the vlog, it's right there. Uh, I had a great time. I uh, hung out with my friends uh, Robbie Noonan and uh, Matt Dierkel, aka Matt uh, uh, Race Day 2011 and Matt Dierkel on YouTube. You should go check them out. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna really excited about these cars uh, because uh, these are straight out of my childhood. Uh, I've got some great memories and uh, they're really high quality die cast that I got for uh, combined four dollars so less than a NASCAR Authentics for both of these cars so uh, let's take a look at them starting with the oldest car Tony Stewart okay so the first thing of note we're gonna take a look at and talk about is the packaging on these old action 164s as you can see the cars in there uh, the plastic uh, bubble holders are not in on this car but they are on the Atwood car uh, very nice packaging uh, very nice looking but I have to make a note here look how many of these cars were produced 10,080. Now, for comparison, I believe the most produced Dale Jr. car, remember, Dale Jr. is the most popular driver in NASCAR by a wide, wide margin. Uh, I think uh, that that is the uh, Batman car, and it's only produced at 9,000. Now, that's the most popular driver. This is Tony Stewart. It's a Bush car, and they produced 10,080 of them. What a different time it was in 1998. Uh, but it does come with a trading card, and we'll take a look at that. Just showing the back of the box and some legal legalese that maybe you want to read, maybe you don't. But the really cool thing about these cars um, from Action back in the day uh, is the packaging. Because it's resealable. You can just take the die cast out and display it and then put it back in. So let's take a close look at the die cast. So I like this car for a lot of reasons. And number one is, of course, the paint scheme. Looks absolutely fantastic. Um, oil companies generally have the best paint schemes, in my opinion, and this one's no exception. Uh, the old shell colors that incorporated the black, red, and yellow, I think really translated well to race cars. Uh, and it just looks very, very nice. Another memory I have of this car is that um, Tony Stewart was playable and I think the, the game NASCAR 99, which was a papyrus game, um, kind of one of the precursors to NASCAR Racing 2003. Uh, you guys may have heard of that game. Uh, but that was one of the ones I played and Tony Stewart was a car in the game because I believe they had the Bush series as well in that game. So uh, I remember this car specifically because th it was this paint scheme. I also like the number 44, not sure, really sure why, I think it just looks good on a race car. And of course the Pontiac body. Uh, these Pontiacs, seriously, the best looking stock cars ever in my opinion. That's an indisputable fact. Uh, there's never been a better looking stock car than uh, these uh, Pontiacs just pretty much in any form but particularly in the late 90s and early 2000s I mean just perfect I mean there's a not it's pretty much flawless so let's take a quick look at the trading card as you can see you've got Tony on there his car and his car uh, again just look at that beautiful Pontiac just fantastic make NASCAR is great again and then you've got uh, just the back here uh, with uh, probably a number that uh, probably goes to something you don't want to call. So uh, let's take a quick closer look at the car, really quick with some close ups. Uh, as you can see, there's no Bush logo on this car, um, but that's going to change in this review. Uh, but just a fantastic paint scheme. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that this is, of course, a throwback scheme for this year's Darlington race. A uh, one Joey Logano will be running it. Um, but uh, I don't believe it's a Tony Stewart throwback. I believe it's a, a Brian Herta throwback. And uh, real quick, as I show a close-up, I'm going to show a picture of Brian Herta's car. And there you go. So pretty much the paint, same paint scheme, but on, Indi on an Indy car. So when I review the NASCAR Authentics version of uh, Joey Logano's throwback, I will refer to it as a Brian Herta throwback. And I expect that will cause about as much drama as when I called a certain car a Jeff Gordon car. So that's fantastic. And that is the Tony Stewart 
action racing car uh, from the Bush Series 1998 season. Let's take a look at the second car, Casey Atwood. So this car was certainly made at the height of the NASCAR diecast industry. Now let's take a close look at it in the box. As you can see, there's actually the plastic holder, so it's not flipping around in there. You can see it's part of the NASCAR 2000 collection, handcrafted in China. It's uh, part of the last lap of the century, 1999 edition. Somebody was charging $20 at some point for it. Uh, I would like to point out that I got it for $2. Uh, and then you've got some sponsorship over here. And then I'd like to point out how many of these cars were made. 12,000. 12,000. Can you even imagine a Bush series or an Xfinity car as it is now getting 12,000 made? My goodness. And then just, uh, oh, there's my face. Uh, and then the back of the card is fairly straightforward. So, again, just like the Tony Stewart car, this is so wonderful. Resealable packaging. You take that out, you slide the card, you let the, the uh, little brackets go back in there, and you shut it back up. And let's take a closer look at Casey Atwood's Chevy, I believe this is a yeah, Monte Carlo. Easy for me to remember. So what was my big childhood memory of this car? Well, Casey Atwood, number 27, in second place, one lap to go, and he goes on a flyer. Atwood was okay, but his dreams of winning here in Daytona will have to wait another year. Yeah, that. I remember walking into a Menard store after uh, the day after that happened. I remember, well, of course, watching it live was spectacular as a kid. But uh, seeing uh, there was a front, it was th a picture of that wreck ended up on the front page of the paper. And when I was walking through a Menard store. Uh, the day after, I walked by and, well, there it was, right on the front page, a picture of this car flying through the air with the greatest of ease. Now, of course, Casey Atwood was one of those guys who was majorly hyped as the next big thing. Uh, he was not going to be stopped. He was the next Dale Earnhardt, the next Jeff Gordon, the next all of this stuff. Uh, and that didn't really pan out. Uh... Sound familiar? Probably about 99% of the guys in Xfinity right now that they're hyping. I won't name names, but you can probably you probably know who they are. Um, just constantly getting hyped, and then they go to Cup, and they kind of peter out a little bit. Uh, but whatever. So let's take a closer look at this car, because there's a lot of cool stuff I want to uh, point out here. Uh, particularly, just the fantastic... Focus the fantastic nature of these Castrol paint schemes. So simple, but so nice. And as you can see, if I can focus on it... There's a Bush logo and a Bud Pole Award logo. Also, uh, to just use Robbie Noonan's little line there, look how many contingencies there were. And this was just in the Bush Series competition. And just a really nice, classy paint scheme. You've got a black bumper, which is uh, of note because I'm going to show you something on the top of the car here in just a second. And we go down the other side of the car. And the top is actually reflective chrome. Not really sure what color you would call this, aside from chrome. Um, and it's just really nice. It's kind of a dark chrome. It's not a chrome you usually see. It's kind of, eh, I'm not sure what, bluish, maybe grayish, or not grayish. That, well, of course, the gray is uh, grayish. But it, it's a very unique color. Uh, very nice looking. And just the, uh, like I said, the oil companies just had the best paint schemes back then. And I should mention, on both of these cars, Metal chassis, metal body, rubber tires. That's how it should be, folks. That's how it should be. And unfortunately, it's not. So let's go in for these two cars and some final thoughts. So that was my review of two cars from NASCAR's golden era of diecast. What did you guys think of these cars? Do you have any particular memories of these cars? Uh, have you? Do you have these cars? Have you picked them up? I think they're still in that dollar bucket in Pocono somewhere. So if you want to go pick them up and you're near Pocono, go for it. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. And also subscribe for more. I do stuff like this all the time for all sorts of racing series, including your favorite, probably, NASCAR. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube, and we'll see you in the next video.